This is a Volkswagen Amarok pickup truck, or to be more precise, this is our Volkswagen Amarok pickup truck. We've been living with it for the best part of four months now, and it's almost time to say goodbye. So we thought it was high time that we updated you on exactly what it's been like to live with. Just to recap, this is an Amarok in Highline spec. It features the three litre V6 engine that every single Amarok comes with these days. A little while back they jettisoned the old two litre TDI and fitted them only with this three litre V6. Uh, our version has 224 horsepower and 500 Newton metres of torque. Uh, and it's mated through an eight-speed automatic gearbox, uh, which has a torque converter rather than dual clutch system. You may remember that Volkswagen have made pickups in the past, but never ones like this. They were back in the days of sort of small, low-down, utilitarian pickup trucks that you do still see all the way around Europe. They had one in the 1980s that you're probably not going to remember, but the one that probably sticks in your mind more is the Volkswagen Caddy, which came around in the 19, late 1990s and was around for a good few years alongside cars like the Skoda Felicia Fun. People will remember those as being a little bit silly. But this one is a very serious proposition. It's about five meters long, it's 1.8 meters tall, and there is a massive load bed at the back. This car has an all-wheel drive system underneath. It's built on a ladder chassis for that little bit extra uh, stiffness. And at the front, you've got McPherson suspension. At the back, we're on reinforced leaf springs to give you that little bit of extra strength underneath the load bay. Now that load bay is the largest around that you can buy in Europe. It may not be the longest, it's actually quite short compared to some of them because it's a double cab, but it has a very wide body and the width between the wheels, which is possibly the most important width on any pickup truck because that's where something's going to sit, uh, is the widest of any you can buy. Now ours came with a very nice protective cover on the top with a lever effect. And if you're using it just as your everyday car, that means that this load bay can be used as more of a boot, but it's very easy to get rid of. You just slide that away and then opening this will reveal the giant load bed. And if you want to compare it to an SUV, think of the old days when a Range Rover had a split opening tailgate and you had that really useful fold down bit to sit yourself on. Inside, if you're ever going anywhere, you'll find, of course, that giant load bed, and you can see that very big gap between the wheels. But in there, you will find a reinforced floor for anything that's going in it. You'll also find 16 volt power socket. So if you're going camping or anything, and you need to power up your phone or anything like that while you're out and about, it's perfect for lugging everything around. There's anchor points all around, front and back, for loading and keeping anything safe. And that chrome bar around the top, which is an optional extra, but we think actually looks quite good, is where you will balance anything that's slightly taller than it might want to be. Ours also comes with something quite handy that you might not expect. That light just there isn't the extra brake light. It's actually a light for the load bed. So if you are unloading or loading anything at night, you flick that on and you're bathed in a lovely amount of light to see what you're actually doing. What Volkswagen have done is they've made this car very easy to drive and hidden its pure size very well. So what you'll find at first is the steering, which is fingertip light. That means there's, there's not a lot of feel, but in reality, you don't want to feel two and a half tons of weight through the wheel. And it would feel like you were trying to haul the car around yourself. So that means that you're relaxed when you're behind the wheel. And while it handles very well, there is some body roll as you'd expect because it sits so high. That's quite well hidden and well damped. You feel more like you're driving a car than you're driving a big pickup truck. The second thing you'll notice is that engine. Three litre V6 is absolutely full of torque. We're talking 500 Newton meters from around 1,200 RPM, which means at the moment you stick your foot down, it is all there right on tap straight away. This big pickup truck which weighs 2.2 tons will hit 60 miles an hour in around eight seconds which is more than enough to embarrass basically anything on the road and certainly anything that isn't a performance car. Now there's no denying that this car has been uh, perhaps 
fiddled with to be a little bit more rugged than the interior on most Volkswagens. You'll find much more, a few more scratchy plastics around in places that you wouldn't expect to find on a Passat, say. But what they've managed to do is transplant the look from every other Volkswagen into here. So there's nice touches around like this admittedly fake brushed aluminium look here. The infotainment system is from every other Volkswagen and the lines across, uh, across the whole interior, they may be from the last generation of Volkswagen interior, but they feel more like something of a slightly more premium quality than you may expect to find. And I think that sort of sums up a lot of the ethos of the Amarok. So what sort of price are, you, are we talking about? Well, a, a Highline Amarok in this spec will start at around £31,000, but this one has been specced up a little bit. With that, we've got some very nice seats. These seats are excellent, and, and when you cruise up and down the countryside, they're fantastic. They adjust in 14 different ways. They've got some lumbar support. Uh, we've got sat-nav, uh, including a full European travel pack, which can be updated every two years. Uh, nice little entertainment, uh, infotainment system, which works very well. That automatic gearbox, the, the fact that it works with a torque converter rather than a dual clutch box actually I think works very well with this. It's very smooth and yes, the downside to a torque converter is that sometimes you have to wait a little bit for everything so, so you put your foot down and you just have to wait a little bit longer but once you've waited everything is very smooth. So it's got uh, climate control, it's got cruise control, not radar guided cruise control but uh, normal cruise control. It's got uh, automatic rain sensing wipers and automatic headlights. It's got everything you would expect from one of Volkswagen's road cars. And with that in mind, the drive, uh, everything about the interior, that makes this car feel like something that, yes, you could use it uh, for your work, and you could also use this every day as your own car. And I think that's one of the most interesting things about the proposal that the Amarok makes. The pickup truck is never going to be everyone's cup of tea because uh, partly because it has that big brash American image and partly because it is a pickup truck at the end of the day It's got a great big load bed at the back But to me and to anyone who is a little bit more minded to like pickup trucks I think this one looks really good the Volkswagen face on the front especially after a little facelift It had a little while back Looks really nice and at the back certainly with the, the more chrome detailing that you get in the Highline trim I think it works really well And perhaps that's another thing that would make someone look more at buying a car like this and not feeling embarrassed. Perhaps it would make them feel a bit more like they want to buy this instead of an SUV. Have we found a proper alternative to the SUV in 2019?